What's up guys? I got another photography video today. Today we're going to talk editorial stock photography. This is a little bit different than the previous video I showed with the strawberries, which by the way, I've already sold two of those images. I'm up a total of 24 cents. <laughs> like I said, stock photography, it's a long-term uh, game. It's not a get rich quick thing. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about the other side, which is editorial pictures, how to make money from your vacation photos, from your travel photos. In this case, if you watch my last week's video, I went rafting and it was awesome. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link at the end. But the main thing is uh, I was able to take some pictures while I was there of other people doing activities. And no, I don't have their model release. I don't have their permission to sell them, but they're in a public place. You can take pictures of other people and you can sell those images. Yes, so I'm going to show you how to do that today. Editorial stock is when you're photographing a newsworthy event, something that's happening that should be in the news or that could be in the news or in a magazine or in a newspaper. When it comes to editorial, it's very specific that it has to be as it was. You're basically a photojournalist. Usage is a little bit more limited, but that doesn't limit sales or potential. So why did I choose these photos from this raft trip? Uh, to sell editorial. Well, first of all, I don't have everybody's model release. So an easy way to sell an image is by selling editorial. I don't have to Photoshop and I actually cannot Photoshop the logos that they have in their helmets or anywhere else because that is against the rules. It has to be as it happened that day. This river, the Loxaw River here in Idaho, it's very popular for rafting trips. And I've seen many news articles. I've seen it on many, on, on, on many places talking about this river. So I know that there's people that need images. Some of these just look crazy, you know, different positions, different people doing different things. I ended up submitting to Shutterstock 54 images. They took all but three. So that's pretty high percentage. And now they're all for sale in my own little uh, gallery here. So I'm keeping track of these just as I'm doing with the strawberry photos. I have 157 online and they've I've made 24 cents <laughs> in two weeks. I do have an idea. I'm, I'm going to continue to take more strawberry pictures. So I'm going to focus on this one subject and I'm going to keep doing more and more. I want to see if I can get that to a thousand pictures here shortly. So if you go to the guidelines for Shutterstock, when you, when you go to upload content, uh, and let me do that real quick. Let me re-upload some of these pictures. So I just uploaded those five images. I'm going to click next and that's going to take me to the next page. Now this is where it has to be a little bit different. So right here in this part of the image, when I hit next and I select the image, whether it's a photo or an illustration, so it's a photo and then commercial or editorial, this is an editorial image. When you shoot editorial, you must follow these rules, these guidelines. The Shutterstock is very specific about how you have to, the description, how, how you have to type out the description. So right here you have city, state, country, month, day, year, and your description. This is the format. You have to use that format or they're not gonna accept your images. I like to save time. I don't submit my best images to stock because you're not going to make a lot of money from them. You're going to get anywhere from 10 cents to the most I've ever made is like $200 for a single image. So it doesn't pay to spend a lot of time, but you do have to put some time in it to make your images discoverable. So that's your keywords, your titles and descriptions. They have to be worded in a way that people are going to search for them. So the more keywords you can add, uh, Shutterstock limits you to 50 the better your chances are of somebody finding that picture. Some of these images, I like them just because it was a beautiful day, rafting down in Idaho. I mean, some of the images are just gorgeous. The place was amazing. When I uploaded these images, Shutterstock declined three because of focus. Now, this is one of the ones that declined. If I zoom in, you can see the water beads. There's no motion blur. The focus is sharp. But, you know, I'm not going to waste my time. I have 51 opportunities to sell in these images. so. Why would I go back and, and argue about one or, or two or three? It, do, it doesn't matter. I have many chances out there. Once you export, you have your descriptions, you have everything um, like we explained here, the, the format, then you can go and submit. But be sure to click right here where it says editorial. Otherwise, they're going to deny it. You have to re-upload and try it again. Click editorial, go back to your category. So you can select different categories. In this case, sports, recreation, and people. Then you can add a location, hit submit, and by the next day they have already accepted 51 of my images, which is awesome. Adobe Stock does not take editorial images. They'll take what's considered um, 
illustrative editorial. So like if I have a, a Starbucks cup, I could sell that in Adobe stock, but not, not these rafting images. They will not take editorial images as of right now. There's links down below to all the agencies that I use. So if you're not familiar with them, go ahead and click on those links and maybe bring some sales up. Who knows, it, it might help. Because of the confusion with the description and, and editorial, it was so difficult when I started. I did not do editorial images at the beginning. For two years, I didn't do any. And then later I decided to, to actually go through the process and do it. And I couldn't believe the sales. You have a lot of potential to sell. On the way to go rafting, I was stopped by traffic because there was road construction. So I took the camera out and, and I took a few pictures of the construction. Again, this is something that, you know, road work ahead. I've sold images like this before. The dump truck dumping gravel, the uh, flagger holding the stop sign. These are images that can also be sold as editorial stock. And something like this, road work, it's always relevant in the news. So I could see a lot of potential in these images. Anytime you have your camera, there's a possibility to make income through stock photography. And again, don't do your best images. I'm not gonna sell this construction worker here holding a stop sign on a frame picture. But I could very easily sell it hundreds of times in stock. So why not? It didn't take that long to process and to keyword. So it, it again, it's a numbers game. The more you have, the more potential you have out there. This is something that has helped me out a lot and I really hope it can help you out in your photography journey. Uh, last, in last week's video, someone commented uh, whether I had used Wirestock yet. Wirestock is an agency where you upload all your pictures to them. You don't even have to keyword if you don't want. They will do that. You just have to put a, a pretty good description so they know how to, how to keyword. And then they take your images and they upload them to other agencies. So it's a one-stop shop. They take a small percentage of every sale, but you only do it once. Now, I haven't used this before. I just started. <laughs> I opened an account because I'm curious. I haven't done it with pictures yet. I just did a whole bunch of videos. So I, they accepted every video I did and I haven't had any sales yet. This just happened today. So I'm gonna keep you posted on how this works and whether I like it or not. In the last video I did about stock, I asked you guys to send me images to a, an email I came out. It's, it's wallishphotography at gmail.com. I'll put it down in the description. And if you have any questions or you want to get into stock but you don't know it, Send me a couple of images. I'll review them on a video. As soon as I have enough images, I'll make a full video. Today, I'm gonna to show you what that looks like. I'm gonna review one image and I'm just gonna give you the tips and how to fix it, how to, whether it's gonna get accepted or sold or, or not. So let me show you here real quick. I'll go back to Lightroom. So this is one image that was sent to me to review. And right off the bat, it's a beautiful sunset. The composition is great. You have a lot of negative space above, but there's an issue with the image. And that, see that's at 100%. And there's a little bit of noise and grain. And this is not the photographer's fault. This is limitations by your equipment. Uh, I believe that's taken with a, a cell phone. I can tell one touch. It is a five megapixel image, which is pretty small for stock. That's barely getting, hitting the requirements. Uh, I don't know if the image was compressed or not when it was sent through the email. If it was sharp, I would say absolutely, it would definitely sell. The composition, the shadow, this might be, if we could get a little bit of detail from the shadows, it might be a little bit better. But see, it's all, it, it gets pixelated and that's because of limitations by gear. Gear does matter. <laughs> you need to know how to use the gear, but your gear is also very important. Now, uh, cell phones take incredible images and something like this, when there's harsh shadows and bright lights, phones don't excel so if you have a see I could recover a little bit so it's not blown out uh, I could get a little bit of contrast let me lose the highlights here it's a great image great concept great composition the uh, I like how the the trees over here were not cut by the the water so they they don't intersect the landmass over here and they, it's a beautiful sun, sunset or yeah I think it's a sunset but sadly, the, the camera had limitations and that's why this picture, I, I will give it a no, it is not gonna get accepted. If it was a camera with better low light capabilities, it would have totally, I would, I would say submit it, you're probably gonna sell it. Even though sunset pictures, there's, the websites are 
bombarded with sunsets because everybody likes sunsets. I sell sunsets all the time. So I could see something like this having a lot of sale potential. But again, based on the limitations of the camera, this is not gonna, it's not gonna work. Sorry. But this is what I'm trying to say. If you send me pictures, I'll do a quick review like this one, maybe even shorter, and I'll let you know what I think and where you can improve. And this one, the horizon stray, uh, there's nothing to crop. You can see the straight line, so that's, that's fine. Uh, like I said, maybe bring up the shadows, but in this case, I can't do that. But anyway, if you're into photography, want to learn a little bit more, maybe how to make money from your photos, travel photos, uh, doing little photo shoots here and there just to learn more, uh, consider subscribing to my channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more stock photography, travel photography, and just the travel experiences, which is why I like to travel and photography is how I do it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to put a couple of links here. This is the, the Loxa experience. It was awesome. And then the first stock photography video I made, I'm going to put it down here in the bottom as well. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Bye.